Okay, so this is definitely one of the largest projects I ever made and it took me 69 3D printed pieces, which is a lot. 210 hours to 3D print all the parts. The amount of money I spent making this was about like $215. That's not bad at all. Not only that, the electricity bill was only $89. But even though I worked for about like, I don't know, um, past 28 days, it only took me like a total of like 100, I calculate this too, only 112 hours. So without further ado, I'm going to teach you guys everything on how I did this project and so that you guys can do it too. Um, and then also at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you guys how much I sold this piece for. All right, enjoy. First thing, download Mesh Mixer. And also, once you find the STL model that you downloaded, you're going to input it into Mesh Mixer and then that's where you're going to start chopping it up. Chopping it up is very easy. All you have to do is just plain cut which is, there's a button for it, plain cut, that's all I use. But if you want to do it the easier way, I highly recommend Lumen 3D. It is the most easiest thing you do. Input the STL model, put in the actual size, and then all you have to do is press a single button and everything gets chopped up for you. But here's the best part. It'll chop it up for you and fit exactly into your 3D printer. The only bad thing is, is that you have to pay a subscription for it which is fine, it's not a big deal if you're rich, but but if you wanna do it the free way, you can use Mesh Mixer, and that's what I use. Okay, now it's time to print. You set up your printer, you lube it up, and you start printing. Finally, after like 11 hours, you finally finish your print. This is the part where you take it, and you leave it to the side, and you wait for the other 69 pieces to finish. No! What you wanna do is you wanna get started right away. Get your 80 grit sandpaper and start sanding the piece. The next thing you wanna do next is use putty. So we're gonna mix putty with water or acetone and we're gonna mix it enough so that it'll be thick, but not too thick. All right, grab a brush, doesn't matter what brush it is, maybe pick the one that you don't like using and use that to brush the putty all over the piece. The next thing you gotta do is use a blow dryer to dry off the putty. Usually what I like to do is I like to air dry it and then I work on other pieces as well. After it's all dried up, what you wanna do next is sand it with a 220 grit sandpaper. After you sand it, is wipe it with isopropyl alcohol. You don't wanna use water because you'll just wash away the putty and that's not a good idea. So don't use water, use isopropyl alcohol. What you wanna do next is you wanna prime it I recommend a two-in-one filler and sandable primer. It works really well with filling up the scratches or dents. And that's it guys. All you have to do is rinse and repeat until you finish all the parts just like that. Okay, so here's the fun part. We're gonna be using hot glue. Take your time. Uh, I use high temperature glue stick. It really, it works really well during hot summer days, but yes, high temperature glue stick. Just be careful when you use it though, because they stick on really fast. So if you're gonna use it, just make sure you place them together very carefully. So after when you put them all together, the next thing to do is you're gonna be using a soldering iron. So this is what we're gonna be using to melt some filaments into the seams of or the cracks of your 3D print. Just make sure that you wear your mask and also get a well-ventilated room because this thing is very poisonous, especially if you breathe it in. And if you have leather gloves, I recommend you use a leather glove to work with it because you don't want to burn yourself. Once you finish soldering, grab an 80 grit sandpaper and sand away the area. Just keep sanding it until it's flat enough. And if it looks good, you want to throw as much putty as possible and sand it with 220 grit sandpaper. You're going to try to round it off and try to like, you know, smooth everything out so everything looks very even. Once you do the 220 grit sandpaper, then you wanna do primer. So yes, there's a lot of sanding and there's a lot of putty and there's a lot of primer, but it's okay because that's literally what the whole project is about. It's literally just sanding and putty, that's it. Once you sand it with 220 grit sandpaper, make sure that there's no dents, there's no scratches. And if there is, what you wanna do is you wanna put a little bit of putty on top of it and then sand it with a 220 grit sandpaper again. After everything is completed and you got your model all set up the next thing is to coat it with primer and you want to coat it as much as possible so that when you paint it everything will stick on perfectly the paint i'll be using the most is acrylic 
and I usually mix them with a lot of water. They tend to leave a lot of brush streaks and that tends to get really annoying. It usually takes me five coats of paint to have it perfect. So take your time, it's gonna be worth it. After that, I bought some of these copper wires from Hobby Lobby and some pillow fluff and basically put them on my model to make it look like it's blowing poisonous gas. So then finally, I take out my airbrush to color the green. For the airbrush paint, I use acrylic mixed with a lot of water. So after 28 days and like 112 hours, the amount I charged per hourly was $25 per hour which came up to $2,800. Luckily, my friend wanted to buy this wheezing. He's gonna be super happy once he receives it. I also made this Charmander. If you guys wanna check out the video on how I made this, you can check it out right above me. If you guys wanna see more Pokemon statue in the future, hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos. Thanks.